This Thank is an you. exciting day because it's it also really the is. launch yes. of, of Tent UK. How what, did the initiative actually start? I mean, this is trying to give refugees a chance, but also economically to be financially independent. Have companies been forthcoming? It, I've been, I have to say, when I, when I launched it, it was in the back of Chobani's success, which I tried to dig in and find out what happened here. And in my journey, I realized that when we start Chobani from this old factory in upstate New York with few people, and as we grew and hired more, one of the most remarkable things that we've done after hiring everybody local is letting refugees who settle legally nearby towns to come and, and be part of Chobani. And the question was then, and same as what it is today, what are the, what are the obstacles for a refugee to be part of a job? Which is language, it's transportation, simple as it is, not having a driver license or cars, or not having the perfect uh, right training for the job that is available, and the unknown. Who are these people, where they come from, what's going to happen? And I think job answers all of that stuff. And what happens, the minute they get a job, that's the minute they stop being a refugee. And companies benefit from it, as Chobani did. And I, I, I credit most of the success of Chobani's as being diversified workforce, when everyone can come in and put their best to it. But Hamdi, how important is it, for example, to do it? So I know you've had initiatives around the world. You started in the U.S., you had one yes. in France, and now in the U.K. I mean, the U.K. is a small, open economy with an extremely tight labor market. Right. How much of a difference could, could this make? Well, here we are. Um, this is the last, the biggest launch that we had. We had Mexico, 50 of them. We had other countries. We are in, we are in 11 countries, 400, as you said, 400 multinational large companies. This is the biggest coalition that we launched to the date, which is 70 companies. Uh, some of them are British iconic brands like BP and, and Pratt, and, and some of them are you know, international, Marriott and Bloomberg. Um, we, have, we have data that 20% of the companies, 10, 10 or more employee companies, are having a shortage of labor. Can't fill it. And some numbers is over a million. We have 500,000 refugees here in UK, Half of them are Ukrainian, some of them are from Hong Kong, some of them from other countries, legally settled, ready to work, and having a hard time to find the jobs. So what TENT does is connect them together and share experiences globally. And we connect with HR departments of the companies yep. and work tirelessly through the years. And our office here in UK in, in the service of companies to make sure that it's a success. Hamdi, why do you think chief executives want to do this? Is this because they want to do good, because it's the right thing right. to do, or is it really to fill a vacuum in the workforce? I, I think it, it had, we, call, we call this win, 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 and it never ends. It continues to win. I mean, it's good for the refugees. It is the minute they're, they're back to their life. Second, companies benefit from this dramatically, dramatically. Culture, productivity, innovation, you know, commitment for long term, massive, massive effect. But what you see is you get rewarded by the population. We did a study in UK, most of the population rewards companies who are hiring refugees. And young talent want to join the companies who are hiring refugees and being part of this humanitarian crisis. So we have this global humanitarian crisis, but yet companies are leaning forward. It's really creating an environment for everyone to join and be part of the solution. In the end, you know, companies who are leaning forward yep. and doing right for business, doing right for humanity and community are the ones who are going to be relevant in, in, in near future and, and, and long time. Um, we speak to a lot of chief executives that say, look, it's actually harder, much harder to, to push a social agenda, to push a, you know, climate change agenda right. because of politics right now. Would you agree with that, that it's actually harder to be a chief executive that does good? Yes, this is a big question, and I think no one questions this. Tomorrow's consumers are going to raise companies their pure purpose of to make money for their shareholders. That idea is an old idea. Everybody knows it. Now, when you are for humanity and community and environment, these are not against the business or success of business. The only question is you have to look at it all dimension of the business to implement it truly, not just check the box, and you have to commit for a long time. And that is basically come down to the shareholders of these companies need to ask the CEOs to commit to these values for a long time. At Chobani, I would say we broke all the records. I'll all tie it back into 
uh, commitment to, to humanity. Do, do you worry? I mean, it's very difficult not to look at, you know, American television without talking about sure. the U.S.-Mexico border, about, I, I guess, anger or, or even hate in certain cases, also in certain parts of Europe against immigrants. How does this end? Well, the saddest part, and I am I'm a Kurd from Turkey, and I moved when I was 21 years old from Turkey to New York, and I didn't want to move, and I had to move. I had to move. And I get a new life for myself, and I hope that I created some better world uh, surrounding me. Migration is a reality. It's going to be here. It'll be here for better. If it's not conflict, it's going to be, um, uh, you know, famine. It's going to be environment. And it has been throughout the history, throughout the year. And every single study shows, and I'm talking about orderly uh, uh, migration, shows that the communities and companies and the cities and towns who welcome and create an environment for everyone to be part of, they get the benefit in the end. Innovation happens. I mean, look at this country. This country is in the backs of migrations, and it creates so much throughout the world and is always leading. And, and that's a reality. Unfortunately, politics is politics. Yep. Yep. Um, and you look at the reality uh, in the U.S., right after the last election and after politics, all the cities and you know, the states that they know that how the refugees and, 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 and illegal immigration does in their community, they want them in their towns and villages because always something new comes up. And it's a reality. Politics is going to happen, but we have to do what's right for the long term for people and for communities. Uh, Hamdi, I also want to talk, talk to you a little bit about Chobani because sure. a lot of people look at you as really, you know, the, the, the poster child of a clever businessman that's made it in, in not, not that many years. You've also recently done an acquisition. So now you have coffee. Which, I'm a coffee, As yes. an Italian, it really speaks to me, but how are you expecting that market to grow? And how do you expect the two to play, you know, yogurt and, and coffee? Yeah, I, I think in the U.S., and I had an attempt in the U.K., people don't know, I was talking to, to my driver as we were coming here. I tried to enter in this market. I end up making in Australia. We are number one in Australia. And one day I might, I might come. I love this country. Um, food is an exciting place. Uh, back to natural, back to good ingredients, especially the post-pandemic has been a reality. And, you know, ingredients, of course, accessibility, these are major, major things. So we built Chobani with very simple idea. Good food is filled with good ingredients an accessible price and available for all. And that idea worked. And now we're expanding. So we added oatmeal, we added coffee creamers, which is poof, and design in, in Italy, in uh, Florence. My friends, they, they designed the packaging. And now we are adding coffee. Uh, I think the food and beverage is having the second spring, in my opinion. But is it changing? I mean, we speak yes. a lot, you know, also to Novo Nordisk because of Lozenpik and, yeah. and some of these, you know, weight loss drugs. Yeah. What's the relationship going to be I like? think I think post-pandemic, people understood that food is extremely important, how they consume what they consume. I think um, it's hard to break it through mm -hmm. because these companies are major big companies. They've been around for a long, long time. For a startup to stay independent and break through it and, and, and disrupt a category like coffee. I mean, you're talking about ready to drink coffee in the U.S., the major brand. It's got 43 grams of sugar. That's 13 sugar cubes in a bottle of coffee. I and mean, that's, just, that's just wrong. Real innovation, good innovation. That's why people bring with La Colombe is coffee that people drink cold now. Just like in Italy, you know, you have your espresso, but there's this new trend. 75% of the people, they consume their coffee cold, even in the wintertime, even in New York. But can, this, can it be wholesome ingredients, very little sugar, not, not too much, and, and can be a daily habit because 90% of population, uh, adult population, drinks coffee almost every day. This is benefits that more and more coming out. So Hamdi, by, by giving something that's a little bit more, I guess, fitness conscious, you think yes. you'll, you'll get through. This is the way the trend is going. Exactly. And, you know, we are all busy during the day, you know, we are busy moms, busy dads, busy workers, you know. What is fueling you naturally? I think it's, it's food, it's well-being, and it's surrounded, you know, with friends and family. These are all important. But stuff like food, we can make it better. It's, we proved that Chobani, it's simple, without preservatives, something that we can name and pronounce the ingredients 
even myself, who I learn English later, <laughs> it's extremely important. And I think it comes down to one simple thing. Is maybe coffee doesn't apply to that, but any food as a CEO we make, yeah. if we don't serve to our children, our family, we shouldn't be serving to anybody else. That's else's. a good benchmark. How big do you want to grow? And actually, I know there was talk about a possible IPO. Yes. Is this something that's still on the cards? Still in the card. We have not made that decision. Uh, company is in a very healthy place. Um, we grow double digit volume and, 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 and dollar, gain shares. Um, it, it's pretty amazing what's happening at Chobani. I, I contribute to all the people that, are, that, that passionately work at the place. We have no pressure. Our employees are 10% owner of company. And I want them to get an access to the wealth that we have generated. And that would be a reason I would do it. And second is to grow this company further. Okay. I personally do believe I'm not big into, you know, making one, three to six billion. But as you grow, your impact yet grows and you get to do no more things. And it gives me a lot of smile. So we'll see. I mean, uh, we have quite a bit of options. So one of them would be that. Andrew, what do you attribute your success to? People. I really, um, of course, America, upstate New York. Uh, Idaho. I mean, America is a magical place. Um, but the people, people I work with every day, refugees, migrants, people come from all backs of background and do the right thing. Everybody wants to do the right thing. And the business is a great environment for everyone to come and join and focus on the common goal. Uh, make good food, build life around it, and make the world a better place. That's not work. It's just having fun.